I've been writing for quite a while now about how you can use computers to do an integrated socialist plan for a socialist economy. Now, those books and articles have all been rather abstract. They've explained the principles of how you do it. I thought it would be helpful to write some demonstration software that people could use to get some sort of hands-on experience of what is meant by this. The talk will be what the software is, what you're going to need to run it, how you actually use it, how it works, and what its limitations are. Where is the software and what is it? It's at this address on GitHub. It's released under GNU license. You can use it to prepare perspective five or three or any number of year plans using data supplied in spreadsheet form. It's useful for learning the principles of linear programming type planning, which was invented by Kantorovich in the 1950s. And although it's quite a limited software package, it could in principle be used for feasibility studies by socialist parties proposing programs to restructure the economies of the countries they live in because I've designed it to take data from spreadsheets which are laid out in basically the same way as standard published I.O. tables which you can get for most countries. If you're going to run it, you need a Linux environment and you run it from the command line. You need to have pre-installed a small number of simple packages. You need Make, which is a standard um, Linux or Unix package for software construction. You need a Java JDK, either the default Java JDK, which comes with Linux, or the Oracle Java JDK. You need the LPSOL linear programming package, which does all the hard calculations. That's an open source linear programming package. It should run on any Linux system. I developed it on an Odroid, which is a little Raspberry Pi type computer, which you can buy for £50. You could probably run it all on a £30 Raspberry Pi. It also runs under Windows if you use a Ubuntu console. From Windows 10, you've been able to run the Linux command line in a window under Windows 10. You have to uh, go to the Windows um, App Store and install the Ubuntu console. You then download and unpack the zip file from GitHub. When you unpack the, the plancode.zip, file, you'll find that the directory plan code contains the following files. Um, check that you've got these. Planning is a directory. There are three source programs in that directory, a CSV file reader, the plan constructor, and uh, a library of classes used in analyzing spreadsheets. The make file itself contains the instructions to compile the software code and make your end year plan. The details of the economy you want to model are included in the CSV file. CSV is a subscript for comma separated value files and it is a non-proprietary way of dumping spreadsheets which contain no actual formulae in them, which only contain data. I have distributed a toy economy in these, set up in a manner that would be reasonably easy to convert published input-output tables from actual economies into this format. The toy economy is just small and simple so that you can understand the principles. 
it's like the famous corn and iron economies that you get in Sraffa's book on the production of commodities by means of commodities. So you change directory to the planning directory where you got it after unpacking the, the zip file. You type make and it then calculates a plan. I will demonstrate that. As I said, I initially developed the software on an Odroid Raspberry Pi clone, but for, it, for making a video, I've moved it onto my Windows machine. So I first move to the directory in which it's located, and I do that using the Ubuntu window. You have to install the Ubuntu command line under Windows if you're going to do this. So I'm in the Ubuntu window, and I move into the mounted directory that move into the directory where I've placed the the code and see what's there so we have the planning um, directory which cont contains the software itself I have a set of spreadsheets I have a documentation file and the make file which contains the instructions on how to build everything. All I have to do is type make. Compiles the spreadsheet reader, then compiles the planning program, applies the planning program to the spreadsheets, generates a model, solves the model using the LP solve linear programming system sorts the model to give it in uh, alphabetical order of the control variables and puts it in plan.txt which is the final output. Now let's look at what's in these spreadsheets. I'll open up the one called flows. Now there's a standard flow input output table laid out in Leontier format in, with columns representing industries but it's as in a CSV file so I'll first open it in WordPad so that you can see it's its native format open with WordPad and what you see is you have a set of headings you have a set of column headings and a set of row headings and you have numbers separated by commas if you're making up your own CSV files directly with a text editor they must follow this format they must have no spaces in the individual fields representing uh, products or product codes etc and there must be no spaces around the numbers numbers can be floating point or they can be um, integers now it's, it's not really convenient to, to use the data in that form so let's open it with a, a spreadsheet I'm going to open it with LibreOffice bit slow this LibreOffice is never one of the fastest things to run Okay, it comes up with a, a menu asking you how to read in the comma separated value file. Just click on OK. And it now presents the spreadsheet in a recognizable form. The, it's much easier to explain what's going on here if I use it in a spreadsheet. So in a, an input output table, the columns represent industries. So I'm, I've got a toy economy which produces iron, coal, corn and bread. Now in order to make iron, I use two units of coal and half a unit of labour. In order to make coal, I use one unit of coal and one unit of labour. 
the, that is to say I use a flow of one unit of coal and one unit of labor we'll get to capital stocks later corn uses a small amount of coal bread uses a certain amount for breaking baking you can see that corn uses some corn as seed corn and bread uses a unit of corn to make bread and the there's a labor input row and there's a final output now this is a format that's relatively easy to extract from a published input output table you don't have to worry from the standpoint of the planning software what units these are measured in what units the coal the iron etc are measured in they're just numbers all that is required is you have a consistent use of these numbers so it doesn't matter what's tons kilograms etc so long as whenever you refer to iron you're referring to it in kilograms or any of you for refer to coal you're referring referring to it in tons and of course if you were doing your own economy you could have many many more industries than this if you take a typical published input output table you will find it contains maybe uh, 30 industries the biggest one that I know of that you can readily obtain on the web is the US one which will give you uh, a breakdown into over 400 different uh, industrial sectors this is the capital stock table previous table was a flow table this table shows how much iron has to be in place in order for each of these industries to produce how much coal must be in place for each of these industries to produce now in some cases you're talking about fixed capital in other cases you'd be talking about stocks buffer stocks of raw materials um, in the case of corn it's clearly a buffer stock seed corn the, the, the farmers require a buffer stock of one unit of seed corn. In the case of iron here, the iron industry requires five units of machinery in the form of iron to carry out production. You, can, you should be able to derive these tables with a bit of work from the published data that you get on the input-output uh, tables the input output tables will typically include accumulation tables capital accumulation tables if you integrate these over a number of years you'll get a good estimate of the working capital stock the next table is a depreciation table and this gives you the rate at which the capital stock depreciates in each industry for each type of capital stock now clearly something like uh, a stock of seed corn depreciates or becomes unusable much faster than heavy equipment that would be in an ironworks so this table allows you to take into account different depreciation rates for different kinds of capital stock in different industries actually obtaining an estimate for these a realistic estimate for these is obviously a lot harder um, I'm not going to go into how you might do that because I've never myself um, been involved in collecting the statistics for it but I think you should be able to get reasonable estimates from published data if you consider the pen world tables which are a widely available open source source of data on different world economies they just assume a depreciation rate of four do things de the capital depreciates over 14 years while this may be true on average you may have to adjust this for different depreciation rates for different types of of products in different economies the let's get rid of this picture the final spreadsheet is the one which gives you your plan targets the plan target here is in terms of final consumption I'm assuming that we, the consumers are going to c consume 0.1 of a unit of iron two units of coal for heating no corn and one unit of bread in the first year 
and the total labour supply is 3 in the first year, 3.01 in the second, etc. The second year, I'm hoping to, that they'll eat a lot more bread and the bread gradually grows up. So, since I am constructing a toy economy, for which I don't know a realistic uh, starting position, I'm relatively cautious in the amount of um, consumption that I set in the first year because since my starting point is unplanned and my starting point is not taken from real observations in this case it takes uh, a couple of years for the planning process to bring it into alignment. Let's see what the plan that has been built by this software is. It's in the file plan.txt. So I'll open that with WordPad. And this gives you a set of control variables. The control variables are given sensible names like accumulation for bread of coal 1, which means accumulation for bread of coal in year 1 is 0 0.5 of a unit of coal. Um, accumulation for bread of iron in year one. So we, we get the level of new investment for each industry of each product listed first. Uh, it's listed first because I make sure all the variables come out in alphabetical order. We then get all the capital stocks for every year. The first capital stock, the capital stock for bread made up of coal, is the capital stock that is in your initial spreadsheet. And then you see the capital stock grows as the plan invests more in the bread industry. S similarly for the other industries. The so we have all the capital stocks of all types of, of uh, goods for all types of goods listed. We then get the, the level of depre actual depreciation there will be for every type of good. And the final consumption that we're able to obtain. Now, we wanted to get one unit of bread. We actually get 0.89 of a unit of bread. So we don't quite fulfill the, the plan the first year. Um, but the second year, we almost almost exactly hit the plan, slightly overreach it. Subsequent years, we comfortably overreach the plan, over fulfill the plan. Similarly for coal consumption, initially a bit low, but it, it uh, is met. This initially a bit low uh, co configuration or uh, result is because I haven't set up my toy economy in a realistic reproduction state at the beginning. So you then get the the, the inter-industry flows that you're going to need of every product. You then get the labor force distribution for every industry for every year. Then you get the, the gross output of each industry each year. You get the total productive consumption of each product each year and you then get the target plan fulfillment that's the ratio between your vector of final outputs that you stipulated and the vector of final outputs that is actually achieved okay how does this planning process work well the Java programs process the spreadsheets and convert the spreadsheets into a set of equations or inequalities which are fed into the LP solve package and the LP solve package takes programs in the format shown in this example here which is actually the output of running this um, planning package you start the the file off with a maximization condition. You say maximize 
the target fulfillment for year one, target fulfill plus target fulfillment for year two, etc., etc. So you maximize target fulfillment or the sum of target fulfillments over all years. Note that I'm not giving any sort of time discount um, for fulfillment in the future versus the past. I'm treating all years as of equal significance. The target fulfillment is then, for each year, is then defined in terms of the amounts of final consumption of uh, each product that has been specified. Now, the original specification was that the target fulfillment had to be in terms of 0.1 of a unit of iron consumed. So I'm multiplying the final consumption of iron by 10 in this line there. And the target fulfillment has to be less than that. So we go through all the, the things which were specified as final consumption, non-zero final consumptions, and set target fulfillment uh, in terms of these. We then have labor specifying equations such that the labor for year one, the total labor supply for year one must be greater or equal than the labor used in every industry. And we also have a specification that the labor for year one has to be less than or equal to three, which was the initial labor supply. So we get a set of equations for or inequalities for each of the variables drawn from initially the, the flow and stock equations. But if we take a, a later year, if we take the output of iron in year two, it's going to be constrained by the capital stock for iron made up of coal in available in year two. It's going to be twice, cannot be more than twice that. So what we get is that the capital stock of iron in year two becomes a constraining variable on the output of iron in year two. And the capital stock for iron made up of coal, which was the constraining variable here, um, is going to be made up of the capital stock of iron made up of coal available from the preceding year, plus the accumulation of iron for iron of coal in year one, minus the depreciation in iron production of coal. Now, some of these are pre-specified in the equations, but the system has to optimize the degree of accumulation from year one in order to get the capital stock it wants to meet the plan in year two and so on as you go on each additional year. Each industry's capital stock has to be optimized in order to meet the plan targets for the succeeding years. And there's a huge mass of equations here, just from that simple model economy of input-output tables, I get 346 equations which specify the conditions of meeting that plan. The thing solves it in negligible time for a small economy like this. I will keep you posted of experiments I do of the performance of this system in dealing with larger input-output tables. I'm releasing this video right at the beginning. Uh, as soon as I've, I've uh, released the software. The things you have to consider as limitations if you want to build a larger system are firstly this format 
of spreadsheets is fine for dealing with data up to the scale of input-output tables that you can readily lay your hands on. If you were really wanting to plan a full socialist economy, there would be no point producing CSV files with huge matrix input-output tables because these are a very low density form of representation. They're very bulky and you would use a more compact representation. But at that point you would have the, 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 the labour power available to write I better software than I can write in my spare time. Um, treatment of how you can use the, the software is of some use. Just to show you what a low cost uh, system it, it can run on and was developed on, I'll show you the computer I originally used for it. It's that little Odroid there, cost about 50 quid, uh, a bit more if you include the case, runs Linux and I got it specifically in order to develop this in a minimal resource constraint uh, fashion. Final point, I'm keen to collaborate with people on this, either uh, developing further software or people hearing from people who actually try to apply it using real input output tables uh, in places where they are or alternatively people who are just using it for teaching how planning might be done.